Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below, letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top-rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from somebody who's already had a few top comments. This is Samuel McReal. He says, the Looney Tunes Hunter Loadout. The primary is the M1014 shotgun with iron sights, a flashlight, and any muzzle brake. And I went ahead and put a modified choke on there to keep the shotgun somewhat versatile. Secondary will be the MP412 Rex, although I think it's just called the M412 Rex. They did a name update on it. Then for Gadget 1, we have the C4, which will be in place of TNT. Gadget 2 will be the ammo pack, which is the side pocket. Grenade will be the flashbang. Knife will be a Bowie. Sup, Doc? First thing to do will be very, very quiet while hunting wabbits. And don't let the ducks fool you into thinking it's duck hunting season. It's not. The shotgun can be used to shoot at enemies multiple times, but the laws of cartoons means it will do little damage. I wonder if you are able to walk off a cliff and stay standing as well. You have some spare shells in your pocket and a couple sticks of TNT to get the wabbits out of the wabbit holes. Good luck hunting, and that's all, folks. And sure, why not mix Looney Tunes with Battlefield? The action is pretty chaotic at times, and chucking C4 around like it is TNT does make a lot of sense. Playing the Elmer Fudd loadout, as I'm gonna nickname it, was actually pretty successful. Shotguns, in case you haven't noticed, are pretty darn good now, especially the semi-auto shotguns. They just do so much damage per shot that you can usually kill in one to two shots, and that makes them incredibly effective in close to medium range combat. Close quarters, you can usually get a one shot kill, Medium range, it's usually a two shot kill. And then if they're any further than that, you just try and get closer before you start taking your shots. Or you waste a lot of ammo at range, hoping that they don't return fire before you can get the kill, which does on occasion happen. And it's kind of funny. Now, although the M1014 is not the double barrel shotgun that Elmer Fudd uses in Looney Tunes, it's still pretty fun to use. And this one was actually designed specifically for military use, which is pretty cool. Cause most shotguns that I see in militaries are just sort of standard design shotguns that have been adapted for military use, but this one was actually built for a military contract. Apparently most semi-automatic shotguns can have a slightly more complex semi-automatic function within them, a gas system or whatever, and this one has been designed uh, more simply, I guess, to hold up under the stresses of military combat. It can also use many different kinds of loads in the shotgun shells, uh, featuring different lengths and different powers. Now what does this mean for the M1014 in-game? Well, the real-world stats of the shotgun don't really affect it much, because obviously durability of a weapon doesn't affect the in-game performance, because there's no in game jamming and thank god for that i know some people actually want to simulate jamming in battlefield 4 and it's like why would you ever want to do that it sounds terrible save it for arma or something but anyway uh, the shotgun itself is good most shotguns in battlefield 4 are incredibly good now they've all been buffed to a certain level where most people are asking for a nerf again it seems to be sort of the standard process people complain about things being underpowered dice overpowers them and then eventually we find a happy middle ground and reporting on shotgun statistics is difficult because they have different pellet counts and they have different rates of fire and reload times and stuff like that which we know but we don't actually know the super specifics of the cone of fire which is kind of unfortunate and you see that little circle in the center of my screen that grows and shrinks that's supposed to represent the cone of fire it doesn't really do a great job of that especially considering that there's still that random element when shooting shotguns where the spread can go in one direction or the other which i think is just again a very weird mechanic to be associated with shotguns but um it's hard to compare them because the m1014 is a great shotgun i can do just fine with it but statistically speaking there's a lot of other shotguns that look a lot better they have higher pellet counts um, higher magazine counts, and they also have semi-automatic functionality to them. So uh, the M1014 is a great shotgun. I'm not going to say it's better or worse than the other semi-automatic shotguns out there without actually having uh, the detailed information of the cone of fire of shotguns, because that's a really important factor. Is like the cone of fire determines how tight the grouping of the shotgun spread is, and that basically determines your shotgun's effectiveness at range. The tighter the grouping, the further at range you can shoot it, but also it's going to be less forgiving in close quarters because you won't be able to just hip fire away and hit people you're gonna be need to be much more accurate which if you've ever actually seen an actual shotgun spread they are generally a lot tighter grouped 
than the ones in Battlefield 4 are. These ones are all just kind of adapted for gameplay and using them in extreme close quarters. Now, how about the rest of this loadout? Well, I'm using it mostly in hip fire here, just having a lot of fun running around, getting up close and personal. I'll aim down sights for ranged kills, but uh, CQB hip fire seems to be the way to go. With a semi-automatic, the flashlight kind of helps out with that, just blinding people or distracting them for just long enough for me to get a shot off with the shotgun. Um, I like loading the shells individually versus something like, say, the Sega 12K, which reloads it with a entire magazine, because if you're reloading the shells individually, you can stop that reload instantly and uh, fire off and get a kill, where if you get caught in the middle of a reload with a magazine reload, you can pretty much die right there. So I like that aspect of the M1014. The one thing that we didn't really take advantage of with this gun is the fact that you can put a ergo grip on here or a vertical grip, and that'll allow us to shoot a bit better while on the move, which is something that I'm doing all the time. But the loadout didn't call for it. You can equip it and it'll probably be better, but I have to admit it didn't really slow me down too much with this shotgun. Now, the only thing that really is going to hamper your gameplay is the map. What map you're playing on? Can you get close enough to your opponents? That's pretty much the only limiting factor with shotguns. And unfortunately, there's a lot of larger maps that really don't give you any pathways for players who want to use close quarter weapons. It can take quite a while or you have to be really risky running across big open areas to try and get into close quarters. So that is the only thing that's going to limit your gameplay with this weapon. It can go from being the best gun in the game to the worst gun in the game simply from the map that is chosen. Now the Rex sidearm can be used at further ranges, but I have to admit the effective range of the Rex is pretty much right where the effective range of the M1014 is. So there's very few situations where I see somebody at long range and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get him with the Rex. That's going to give me an advantage. Not really. The damage drop off on the Rex is so significant that you can be shooting them three or four times at the ranges where you could probably drop them with the M1014 in the same amount of time. Now, if I were using the 44 Magnum, I might consider using that a little bit more at range situations than I would have with the Rex because uh, it can do significantly more damage at range you have the one shot headshot capabilities at uh, a pretty long distance with that handgun so it's a good alternative and i think it suits this loadout a little bit better than the rex does now when it comes to people actually saying that shotguns are overpowered and it's hard to argue with them when using them in close quarters they're just absolute beasts they just wreck people and they're fun to use but also it's just a complete advantage in cqb combat but then again you think you know the shotgun should have the advantage in cqb i think they might have increased the range with it a bit too much and a lot of this is due to poor battlefield for map design it really sucks because uh, weapon balance has to be done perfectly around the maps that are given to you in Battlefield 4 and the map design is not only super inconsistent with the engagement distances but just generally bad not a lot of cover so they had to increase the range on shotguns to make it more effective but now they're just complete beasts in close range and medium range engagement so it's just one of those problems that uh, has come as an effect of the bad map design in Battlefield 4. Hopefully the next Battlefield game will have uh, better map design, better rules about how they design the maps, and maybe a little bit more math done where they can like accurately calculate the average engagement range and make sure that there's always going to be some decent cover for people who want to play close quarters and always some good long ranges for people who want to play long range. Now since we're playing the support class and we get the C4 and ammo boxes, I can spam fire as much as I want to. Normally I might be a little bit more careful and calculated with my shots, but since this is a semi-auto shotgun, you want to spam fire whenever possible, and if you got the ammo to do so, then just do it all the time. So I love running with ammo boxes with this kind of setup. The flashbangs are okay, but I really just don't like how inconsistent they are. It's hard to tell if your opponent is truly flashed to the point where you're going to have an advantage on them. All in all, though, I have to say this loadout's pretty effective on the right map, probably more effective than Elmer Fudd ever was. Don't forget to leave your comments for the next episode of Loadout, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.